This is Vernon Jacob, Senior Pastor of the Embassy Church. I want to thank you for engaging with us through this podcast. May it build your faith and strengthen your walk and cause you to reach the rooftop in Christian living. Don't forget to aim high and never give up. Let's go now straight into this word. Amen. Well, thank you. God bless you. Uh, I feel the presence of God still lingering on. I'm not sure how to move. <laughs> If, if you understand that. But anyway, we have Nikki Rousseau. Um, she joined us for the spiritual camp. She flew in all the way from Cape Town. She's an onliner. So just by being on- online, she saw the, the camp and said she wants to come. And so I want you to uh, welcome her because she stayed over. And then she's joining our service and flying back uh, to Cape Town. Uh, you, 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 you actually left behind a storm. Because when you go back, you go into a... Uh, b- 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 storm, but we had another spiritual storm, and I hope you were blessed. Will you stand? Let's uh, the church give you a good, warm welcome. And to those that are, your, thank you. God bless you as you travel back. May you take the fire of God with you. Those of you that are joining us online, God bless you. Thank you for being intentional and uh, flipping into the YouTube channel. And may the Lord bless you. Something strange is happening in the atmosphere. When I say strange, I mean good in a spiritual sense. Amen. Um, I'm going to take us through, and uh, this is part of the the sermon that I'm teaching on the mysteries of God. So start to pay attention. Um, We're going to learn some things and uh, learn about princes and all of those things as we go ahead. How many of you love God's word? Amen. Amen. Just two of you. (laughs) I want to say to you this morning that the strategies of God differs from the strategies of Satan. And you must be perceptive and also you must discern the strategies that is enticing you. Because sometimes they may look similar and sometimes they may differ. You as a believer must ask yourself, is this God or is this demonic? You must understand and know which realm is open to you. So Jeremiah Jeremiah 18 verse 2 says, Go down to the potter's house. And I will show you that there is a potter there and how he takes the clay and puts it on the potter's wheel. And I'll show you that the making of a of pottery, of a clay pot, is not a one system process. But it takes many layers. It is a process. Somebody say process. I rise to tell you this morning that you cannot be God's product if you are never going to go through God's process. And God will deal with us the way he wants to. But in the end, the result is to pour in earthen treasures into earthen vessels. It's to put in all of his treasure into you. That's what he wants to do to you. God places premium on process The devil places premium on quick fix. I said to you the other day, I'd rather be in God's program for eternity than be in the devil's diary for a day. Please learn here with the spirit this morning. And lots of people are enticed by by quick fixes. Somebody say quick fix. So if you're perceptive by now, you know that God has a process and Satan has a quick fix. God has a process, Satan has a quick fix. God has a process, Satan has a quick fix. Satan's operational system is quick. Satan's prosperity does not require process. Satan's prosperity does not need you to have a foundation, does not need you to have any roots. A wise man built his house upon the, a foolish man built his house upon the sand. And if you will listen with the ear of the spirit, that God's process takes a little longer but stands forever. Yes. Satan will give you something quick but it's like quicksand. Because he's a trader. 
Satan is a trader. You give him your talent. You trade your gift. In exchange, he releases his blessing. In inverted commas, his blessing. In inverted commas, he releases his power into you. But for a day. That's why you call it a fad. And the young people, listen to me, young generation. You are into fads. But you must know that it is for a day. Some of you didn't even know what a fad is, but you know it's a fad. It's for a day. We are into trends. We, we into uh, fashion. But in as much as the bell bottoms went out, it's coming back. I can't uh, see it, but I can't imagine it. But yes, from narrow, it's going to come back to bell bottoms. Satan's methods produce results faster. And right now, Satan's methods appeal to our generation because we are a microwave generation. I love the, the concept of load shedding and especially when there's no power and then you're going to make that uh, tea in the pot on the stove. That's the best chaiwala you can ever have. When you make that, that tea in the, anybody, anybody, or is it just me? Anybody know what I'm talking about? When you stir that thing and uh, it gets dark brown and then you pour in the, ah, that's, that so feels good. So Satan's methods produce results very fast, but they also expire, listen to me, before God's process is complete, that Satan's blessing will be diminished. Whilst God is still bringing you in and rooting the system, he'll give it to you. And before you even see fruit on the tree, according to God's process, he's got your, the blessing is gone. People attracted to things and when they get it quickly, because they're attracted to things and they get those things, uh, because of the, the attraction that produces results so quickly without process, they end up serving the things and they end up serving the God of the things. Are we together? There is a mystery in the Bible under Noah, no, Noahic covenant when God tells Noah and he blesses Noah with a covenant. I was teaching them at the spiritual camp that God will bless you inside of three ways. God will bless you by encounters. You can encounter God and you can rely on that encounter. When, you, when you've encountered God and you've been rooted in God, when you know your God and your God knows you, when you know your God and you can do great things for your God based on that I, I have God on my side and you know that you know that you know that God is with you and he will never forsake you. Neither will he leave you because you had an encounter with God. Uh, Jacob had an encounter when he put his uh, uh, head on that stone pillow and there was angelic activities. There was angels moving up and down. That was his encounter in Genesis 28. But I rise to tell you that that was not Jacob's own altar. Oh God. It was Abraham's altar in Genesis 13 with the same place, the same situation Situation. Abraham built the altar at Bethel. That altar was called the altar of prayer. Abraham built four altars. He built the altar of praise. He built the altar of prayer. And so that altar that was built in Genesis 13, in comes his great grandson, the great grandson in Genesis 28, and he's moving to, to build an altar. Suddenly, he comes to the same spot, not knowing that his grandfather already created an atmosphere, an environment for angels. That's why Jacob said after he had an encounter, surely the Lord is in this place, and I discerned it not. Some of you need to understand and know how to sense the presence of God. When you sense the presence of God, the yawn will disappear. When you sense the presence of God, the sleep will disappear. When you sense the presence of God, the 
pain will ev evacuate. Uh, when you sense the presence of God, your mind suddenly starts to connect. Uh, surely the presence of God is in this place uh, and I discerned it not. Uh. So Jacob had an encounter. The rest of Jacob's life, uh, everything that he depended on when it came to spiritual things, uh, he will go back and he will think about his encounter. Surely the Lord uh, is with me. I may not have bread with me today, but I remember how God provided. The songwriter said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for him, my very soul, my very soul, my very soul cries out. Is there anybody whose souls cry out when they sense the presence of God? It's called an encounter. When you have an encounter, take your seats, take your seats. That's an encounter. The next thing that I'm going to teach you that God will flow in. You don't have to work anything. Just tap into a principle. When you know that there's a principle, the backing of the spirit backs that principle. So God, Cheryl tells Noah that there are four things that is not going to, that's going to happen on the earth. Genesis 8.22 While the earth remains, these four things will never cease. Seed time and harvest. Cold and hot. Summer and winter. Day and night. As long as you live, you will have these four things. Seed time and harvest. Cold and hot. Summer and winter. Day and night. I want to ask you this morning, can you control hot and cold on the earth? You can't. No matter how many, whatever you do, you can't control hot and... Can you control when the season changes? No, when it comes to uh, September, it's spring. Even the birds will sing. Even the roosters will crow. They just perceive uh, that there is a shift uh, in the season. Day and night... You can sleep all through the light. But if it's day, it's still day. You're sleeping in the day. And you're thinking it's night. But you can't change it. Day and night cannot be changed. And uh, uh, so, so, so those three things you can't have control over. But you can have control over seed, time, and harvest. When you plant, you will receive uh, if you pl plant what what is the right word i don't want to sound uh, for dania coriander when you plant coriander it has like four weeks is that right you can in four weeks you plant surely four weeks yes you give it four weeks and you will you will be able to put it into your curry now you can have control over those four weeks. Uh, I can plant next week and four weeks later. I can plant two weeks later and four weeks later. Do you understand that you can control seed time and harvest? That's a, pro that's a promise. It's a, I'm showing you a mystery, by the way. This is the mystery of God's word. Some of you never sow, but you expect to reap. That's not the principle. The principle, if you put a seed... Wait for a time, you will reap in a harvest. The word there is not seed, time, and harvest, although it's a spelt together. But the mystery of it, it's supposed to be in, show me my slide, seed, time, harvest. That's how it goes. I, I, I put it down there. You changed it, but anyway. It, I put it in a... In a, in a yeah. Seed, time, harvest. So I want you to sow this morning based on the principle that if God said it, he will do it. I started to tell you that God will bless you in three ways. By giving you an encounter, by giving you a principle, and you can follow a covenant and see that this is the pattern. If it worked for Noah, Noah becomes the, the pattern of that technology. I'm teaching you, it's deep, right? But he becomes the pattern for the system. 
So give no other pattern. We follow the pattern that if they, you sow in one season, you'll reap in another season. That's the covenant transaction or a transaction of a covenant. This morning you can stand under an encounter and say, I don't need a principle to stand on because I know who my God is. He did it for me six months ago. He'll do it for me again. Or you can sow under the principle of seed time harvest. Whatever I sow, I'm going to sow as my seed. I'll wait for my time. The principle of harvest will come to me. Or you can stand under the covenant of Noah and say, if you did it as a covenant to Noah, and you said to him, if I use the window of opportunity of one season, my next season will come. If I sow in winter, I'll reap in summer. If I sow in spring, so this morning it's going to be a window of opportunity for you to change your season. I'm not sure what season you are in, but there must be a cycle. Even if you're in harvest, I'll talk about... I'll talk, I'll talk about the, the assignment. Oh, maybe I should talk about it now. The assignment of bread. The assignment of bread is to satisfy present hunger. The assignment of seed is to satisfy the appetite of tomorrow. Your future hunger. Let me say again. The assignment of bread is to satisfy today's hunger. The assignment of seed is to satisfy the appetite of tomorrow or tomorrow's need. This generation likes to eat everything. You eat your bread and your seed in the same day. I'll tell you what, that's how you will be blessed for a day. But tomorrow you can be moved to a beggar and pauper ship. If that's a word. I didn't say pau pauper ship. I said paupership. You can be a pauper tomorrow because you did not understand the principle of bread and seed. When you understand that God in His benevolence will always give you bread for today and seed for tomorrow. If you don't understand God's benevolence of 10,000 rand given today, inside of the 10,000, maybe 2,000 is for you to preserve it. It's the seed for tomorrow's need. But if you consume the whole 10,000, and that's what many people, that's when you say, I'm living from hand to mouth. When you live from hand to mouth and you come into tomorrow and you don't know how because you have not learned the principle or you've not seen the mandate of God's blessing for today has also God's blessing and provision for tomorrow. Are we together this morning? That is why, and uh, I was telling a church when I went to them on Thursday, that uh, there's so many people leaving South Africa, living in a hurry, and there you can get good properties. Properties worth six million, you can get it for two million. You can make four million overnight if you had the, the two million reserved. But you ate everything yesterday. And you have nothing for a window of opportunity. Windows of opportunities. You must be able to recognize windows of, of opportunity in your life. That's living with the mysteries of God. You'll meditate long enough on this word. And God will open your heart to the mystery of what I'm saying. My pastor taught me. How to eat, even when you, when you have the, the when, when money comes now, look at it carefully. I received 10,000. How much of this 10,000 is for today and how much is of it is for tomorrow? And I'm not talking offering now. I'm talking about how much do you save in every amount that comes? How much do you save? Not for the church, not to give a tithe, not to give an offering. Do you have a saving mentality or do you have a spending mentality? In the camp yesterday, they found a lady's handbag. Uncle Paulia, in all his wisdom, where are you? Is he here? In all of his wisdom, 
and you must listen to an old man because he's got wisdom. Young people got strength. He got wisdom. He said, open it. If there's no money in the purse, it's a lady's bag. <laughs> because she probably spent everything. <laughs> That's him now. Yes, he's wisdom. But you must be able to recognize that there is a tomorrow. Even in the blessing of today. Sow a seed for tomorrow's future. I'm, I told you I'm not, I'm not receiving the offering per se. I'm teaching you the mysteries of God. And God, for the entire life of your time, you, he's given you secrets in test tube form. I'm going to talk about it just now. It's a mystery. Somebody say mystery. You must be able to unravel the mysteries of God. Are you ready to give this morning? Take out your seed. You are inside of a window of opportunity. Father, I pray this morning that the vistas of heaven will open. That the realm of God, uh, forgetting, will be open to us as we give. Because you said, oh God, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Do that for us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's receive your giving.
So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise, it's your in the love. So we pour out our praise, it's your breath in the So we pour out, so we pour out. This, a few moments this morning I'm going to lay the foundation for the subject and then we'll pick it up anytime we meet but I believe as a church God wants us to understand the subject and that's why I'm bringing to you the mysteries of God pay careful attention as you remain standing this morning I want you to know the mysteries of God are a reminder that uh, there is much that we need to know about God and that we are called to trust him he even when we do not understand a thing and the way that you understand and you trust him even even though you don't understand it is by faith you 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 read and you accept it until such time you get understanding of it you still receive it by faith but inside of that word is a depth that needs to be understood. How will they know if they don't have a teacher? There in the there's a story in the book of Acts where this Egyptian eunuch, no, sorry, the Ethiopian eunuch is reading the scripture and he doesn't understand what he's reading Isaiah. And so um, Peter, I think it is comes to him and says uh, do you understand what you are reading? He says, how can I understand if I have nobody to tell me? Because the Bible is full of mysteries and you need somebody to teach you. Am I right? That's why many of you, you open it, you're confounded. The only time some of you open, you don't even open your Bibles. You look at the screens uh, and that's all it's doing it for you. Uh, some of you read uh, devotionals and you feel you're reading the Bible because those, there's mysteries there. I'm getting ready to show you today that God alongside of the mystery is also given you a teacher in the Holy Spirit. I want you to know that there are many secrets to your own life. That is, is in your own life and, and there's, there's no revelation of it. It's, it's a, there's a seal on your life and for that revelation to come, for that mystery to open in your life, the seal must break. There must be a, a time when the seal breaks. I'll talk about that next week. But many of your lives have many mysteries, benefits, advantages. It's in test tube form, but it's not yet unraveled in your life. Anybody want some seals to break this morning? For you to know that. Listen, even young men, young, young, young men unattached, not dating, even young girls, unattached, not dating, not married. There is a seal of marriage that's intended for you. God knows it. And you will remain unattached, un unmarried until the seal breaks. And that mystery is revealed. The mystery of it, that's in itself the mystery of marriage over your life. I don't know who I'm talking to. I saw your hand go up, son. Yeah. And some young men like you. Yeah. You'll see. The seal just broke. Yeah, you must do ridiculous things, man. Come here, sir. I'll give you two moments of fame this morning. Yeah. All the married ladies now, just shut your mouth, sir. Don't ask for seals to break. Uh, uh, yeah. but, but there's a seal of marriage that must open over your life 
must break. You understand? Right now, I sense that, that that seal broke over you. You're a, you're a good man. You're a good guy. Thank you. So, that's what I'm talking about. There's a test tube that, that needs to be broken. It's already in your life. Will you get married? Yes. I'm a man of God. I'm telling you. You're going to marry. I just lifted the gate this morning. You understand? There are ways that you do. You lift the gates. Oh. And if you're not married, and uh, you, 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 you have to come out there. Even flowers, when they want to uh, spread their seeds, they come out and they open up and they attract birds and bees and butterflies. And those birds and bees and butterflies come and sit on the color of it, takes that seed and goes and sits into on another tree, takes that seed and uh, the... Um, Pollen, I'm trying to find out the stigma style and ovaries open up. Yes, man. You must have stigma. You must have style. And I know you got ovaries, but nothing's going to meet the ovary if there's no stigma and no style. Come on, somebody. Woo, hallelujah. God is in this place this morning. Yeah, you got the ovary. You must have stigma and you must have style. Did somebody see that's a mystery that just opened up this morning? Yeah, you're reading the Bible and you can't, you're so spiritual. Oh, God is gonna bring a man. Not if you're in the chambers already. You go to the bent chamber after the man. I tell you this morning, the secrets of our lives are hidden in mystery forms. You know why? Ask me why. Because if the devil finds out what you're carrying, before you hatch it, he'll snatch it. Yes. So God has to give it to you in mystery form. The mysteries of your life cannot be just advertised out there. No, the devil, he's so cunning. He'll abort it before you even birth it. No, you're joking. That's why our lives are filled with mysteries. There are mis your whole life is a mystery. Take your seats. I got four minutes. Anybody want to lend me ten? Aha. Uh -huh. There are several things intended by God to give you an advantage in your generation. There are several things. Somebody say things. I want you to understand that word and pay, pay attention. I'm going to release you. I'm, I say, I'm serious. I'm going to release. There are several things. Some of you are having a good sleep. Man, look at that. God. Just do me a favor. Just kick the seat in front of you. I'm not going to even embarrass her. But it's very embarrassing. Yo, oh, my God. Yes. Right. Good. You're awake now. I saw it. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh God, I can't be so bad, can I? Not me. You know, the pastor told the elder, go get that man up. The elder said, you put him off to sleep, you get him up. <laughs> I hope that's not the... Uh, <laughs> no, sir. All right. There are seven... Some of us on diabetic medicine, that's, that's a challenge, you know. There are several things intended by God to give you an advantage in your generation. Say, God, reveal the things to me. Say, God, reveal the things to me. Make that a prayer point right now. God, reveal the things. God, reveal the things. Yes. Now, it's only a mystery because it's beyond what your heart can conceive naturally. Except that if it's disclosed by the hand of God to you. Daniel 8.27 was going through this mysterious process. It's a verse, it says, Daniel was worn out. 
He says, I lay exhausted for several days. Then I got up and went to the king's business. I was appalled by the vision. It was beyond my understanding. So you can have a mystery. Daniel, the, the mystery was given to him, but he didn't understand it. So because there was no understanding, it remained a mystery. Uh, this is unlike um, the stories of Agatha Christie. Is it Agatha? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I really appreciate the correction. <laughs> Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie. <laughs> Agatha Christie. You got to wait for when it is done. Right to the end. <laughs> right to the end. <laughs> you all understand? So you got to wait right to the end. But this is not that type of mystery where it's, where it's mysterious. No, this is a mystery that's already there. It's already made known until the Holy Spirit comes and gives you access to the code of the mystery. And that is why you need the build-up of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is licensed in, in God's word. Give me your Bible, somebody. Give, give me your Bible there. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, son. This is full of mysteries. The only thing that can open it up, not you naturally, but spiritually, to open the mysteries. The only person that can reveal it to you, licensed to give you the access code to any of the mysteries, is the Holy Spirit. And because it's so easy for him to do that because he's the author of it. So when, it, when you're reading it, the, the Bible is the only book where you have the author present with you. How's that, Kenny? The Bible is the only, you can have a, read any other book, the author may not be present, unless you're reading Shireen's books. <laughs> but, I feel God this morning, man. <laughs> the Bible has the access code. Somebody say access codes. All right, let me, I want to show you two scriptures and then I'll, I'll let you go. Our scripture of interest, 1 Corinthians 2, 7 and 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Paul says, how do we speak it? Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world in, unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew. He's trying to say, I've hidden it so that the devil won't get it. Which none of the princes, I underline princes because going down in, in, this, in the embassy, I'm going to talk about princes. The princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If you're a good student, you will understand that this is the mystery of crucifixion being hidden from the princes. The mystery of crucifixion. So there are many mysteries in the Bible. The mystery of salvation. The mystery of death, resurrection, and uh, ascension. That's why Paul says, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. For in a twinkling of an eye, how, how quick is that? We shall all be changed. Do you know, I want you to batter your eye. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Oh, how I wonder what you are. That's twinkling. In the twinkling of an eye, there is no time to measure the battering of your eyelid. It's not even a second. It's not even a nanosecond. That's how quick your body will be changed. You can't understand it because it is a mystery. Paul says, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but in a twinkling of an eye. Which none of the princes of this world knew. Now, let's go to the next scripture 
the mystery of things. In John chapter number 16, verses 12 to 13, Jesus is sitting and he's talking to his disciples. And he talks to them many things. Towards the end, he sees them. I have more things to say to you, but you can't receive it now. You, you, human nature, some of you are only programmed to sit here. For, that's why I'm trying to push for time. Uh, this is Ivarate, you know that. You're looking at me strange now. <laughs> some of you have already said, now you're in my time zone. <laughs> You're joking. Jesus says, besides the time, besides you, your body, your physical body can't handle this, your spirit also can't handle it. He says, I have many, what? I have what? What? I have many things to tell you. Many things. The word things means I have many mysteries to show you. But right now, you can't handle it. Right now, you're not inside of a time zone to even understand it. It's, it's too futuristic to bring it from the future into the present. But the Holy Spirit will come and he will show you what? All things. When he speaks about things, it's not like the guy says, you check that thing. No, no, that's, this is a different thing. This is a mystery. You don't believe it? Give me the next text. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, there, yeah. 1 Corinthians 2 9. Yeah, it's there. 1, 1 Corinthians 2 9. Yes. But it is written, I has not seen. No ear heard, neither as it entered into the heart of man. Let me hear you read. The what? You know what he's talking about there? Change the word for me. He's talking about the mysteries. Neither has it entered into the heart of man, the mysteries which God has prepared for them that love him. But God had revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches uh-huh. Searches what? All things. The Spirit comes and searches all things. Yea, the deep things of God. This church needs to transcend from milk to meat. Not that we've been feeding you uh, milk, but you need to go and ask God for the depth of things. Are you prepared to receive the deeper things of God? You need to understand that there is more for your life than just what you have in your life. And in the next phase of your life, having gone through this teaching, God is going to give you what is hidden for you. But I rise to tell you this morning, it is not hidden from you, but it is hidden for you. Again, I tell you this the truth uh, that it is not hidden from you. It's been a mystery that has been hidden from the princes of darkness so that they cannot abort it, so they cannot snatch what you're supposed to hatch. Are we talking to somebody this morning? Yes. How many of you are ready to receive the deep things of God? How many of you are tired of living in a shallow place? How many of you are tired of being in a water ankle or just feet deep? I see the man moving beyond, beyond foot, footstools, moving to ankle deep. Somebody touch your ankle with the other ankle. Some of you are so deep just there. Yeah, but it's time to go deeper. Somebody say, I'm going to go deeper. Somebody say, I want to go deeper, man. I want the depth of God for my life. Take one step forward and say, I'm going to be knee deep. Aha, aha, aha. You're going to be knee. Do you know where your knees is? Do you know the anatomy or should I do anatomy 101 with you this morning? I can do it. I'm good for in biology. I'm good for it. You're going to go knee deep. 
But beyond going knee deep, the one man went loins. These are the loins. Gird up your loins. You're going to have to take one more step. You're going to have to take one more step and say, I'm going to walk with God. I'm going deeper. Somebody say, I'm going. I want to go deeper. Is there any 10 people who want to go deeper with God? I certainly want to go deeper with God. I certainly don't want to be. Uh, uh, uh. I take my mother-in-law sometimes to the beach. She's brave. But all she can do is dip her feet in the water. Uh, not even ankle deep. Just toes of God. It takes them. I take my wife to the water. She goes and when the water's coming, she turns and runs. Anybody here? want to go and dive into God and say I'm putting my whole life into God I'm not settling for the for the hidden mysteries of God but I want the deep things of God I want the mysteries of God to be revealed to me by the Holy Spirit yes yes Lord I want to tell you this morning that there's a mixture given in between inside of you. Uh, meditate on the scripture and then next week I'll pick it up. 1 Corinthians 6.16 6, Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her body? For it is said the two will become one flesh. That's in a fleshly sense. But whoever unites themselves with the Lord is one with Him in spirit. Oh God. I rise to tell you this morning that the access code is already inside of you. I'm announcing it to you that you have the code for the mysteries of God. I like to call it, in my sermon, if I give it a title, this is just me. The mystery of a mingled spirit. The mystery of a mingled spirit. When you said yes to God, God put his spirit in you. Whether you speak in tongues, we talked about it at the camp. Whether you speak in tongues or not, uh, the Holy Spirit is with you. When you said yes to God, the Holy Spirit mingled itself with you. And you are, you have your human spirit and you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he searched all things. Uh, there is a scripture there that I have. Yeah, slide 13. These are the things that God has revealed to us by that mingled spirit. Let me tell you, each one of you, please don't underestimate the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. If you bend your knees, you bow your head, you look up to heavens, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. If you would look to him, he today will reveal some of the things that is needed for today. Yes. Yes. These are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit that is in you searches all things. Even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit. Their own spirit within them. That human spirit. But there's that mingling of that Holy Spirit. So it works with your spirit. And it starts to talk to your spirit, talk to your mind, talk to, are we together? Keep it there. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. So no one knows your own thoughts, that's your spirit, and no one knows the thoughts of God, that's his spirit. But when there's a mingling of that spirit, our God, he starts to talk to you. I was going to teach more. Maybe I'll talk. Yeah, keep it on that slide. I prepared to teach to you, teach you the mind of God. The mind of God. Hey, you would have heard, and I, and I used to hear this too. 
uh, some pastors used to tell me, you're confused now. But why don't you get the mind of God in the matter? I didn't quite understand that until I started to study this and see what is the mystery of what I'm going through? Why am I going through this pattern? What is the technology of God open to my life for this situation? So let me get the mind of God. I also, if you gave me time, I was going to tell you how when you make decisions, inside of a decision, the mind of satanic influences can affect your decision. You can make one thing and some of you say, I made a foolish decision. It wasn't a foolish decision. It was introduction of a spirit into that decision. And because you made that decision, it now turned out, sir, to be a curse. So what you're supposed to do is when you're making decisions in under the pattern of a mystery, you're supposed to get the counsel of God. We must have the, what is the counsel of God, Roxy? For whatever you're going through this morning, I know you've discussed, you make discussions and you make negotiations. But inside of this patterns that's happening in your life, what is the counsel of God? Adrian, where are you? What is the mind of God? I know you got your own mind, but is that mingled spirit just taking out just the human part and making a decision? What is the mind of God? Have you paused for a moment and said, God, what is the mind for you? And I rise, I don't know whether I put it there. You must wait on God three nights. That's just my mind. Wait on God. Have you, some of you want to just make a decision. Wait three nights, three days, and get the counsel of God. Anybody here needed to hear that word and you in... You, you, you're in, inside of a transport, you're transitioning, and you don't know what to do. You really don't know what to do. It's a mystery to you, but you need to have the mind of God. When you seek the mind of God, Rita, you will download the counsel of God. And the way to know that the mystery is going to be solved is when you have the peace of God. How does peace look? Well, it looks like those robots or the Americans say the traffic light at the intersection near your house. It's got red, amber, and green. If it's red, that's not the peace of God. If it's amber, it's the cautions of God. And if you feel the green light, it's the green lights of God. Go into it. When you have peace, like a river, it's green. When you have all kinds of things, you still, it, you, you betwixt two things, you still don't have the counsel of God. Wait for the green lights of God. Wait for the peace of God. Are we together this morning?